Once there was a group of friends, Anna, Ben, Craig, and Daisy, who lived in a small town in the countryside. They had always been adventurous and loved exploring new places, so when they heard about an abandoned house on the outskirts of town rumored to be haunted, they couldn't resist the temptation to check it out. The group of friends had been preparing for this trip for weeks. They knew that the abandoned house on the outskirts of town was rumored to be haunted, and they wanted to be as prepared as possible. They met early on a Saturday morning, each carrying a backpack filled with essentials, flashlights, knives, extra batteries, caps, and water bottles. As the group of friends approached the abandoned house, they were immediately struck by how eerie and intimidating it looked. The house was surrounded by a wooden fence, with a broken entrance door hanging off its hinges. The paint was peeling off the walls, and all of the windows were broken and boarded up. In front of the house, there was a big yard that stretched out for almost 200 meters. It was overgrown with weeds, and there was a dried-up swimming pool filled with leaves and debris. The only trees that remained were bare and lifeless, and the plants that once grew in the garden had long since withered away. After entering the haunted house premises, the group of friends found themselves standing in front of the main house door, which was half open. Eager to see what secrets the old house held, they turned on their torches and peered inside. Despite their reservations, the friends pushed open the creaky front door and stepped inside. As soon as they did, they knew they had made a mistake. The air was heavy and oppressive, and they could feel the presence of something malevolent lurking in the shadows. As they shone their light around the room, they were immediately struck by how spectral it looked. The windows were broken and boarded up, and the paint was peeling off the walls. There were cobwebs everywhere, and the floor was covered in dust and debris. Despite the foreboding atmosphere, the friends were determined to continue with their plan. As they stepped inside, they were greeted by a sight that made them all gasp in shock. The entire room was filled with bats' nets, hanging from the ceiling like some sort of macabre decoration. The friends knew they had to be careful. They didn't want to disturb the bats and risk being attacked. Despite the danger, the friends were determined to uncover the secrets of the haunted house. They knew that they had to be brave and stay focused if they wanted to make it out alive. The group knew they had to move quickly if they wanted to uncover the secrets of the haunted house. They decided to split up into two groups to cover more ground. Ben and Anna would take the upstairs to search for the spirit while Craig and Daisy would stay on the ground floor to explore the rooms. As they climbed the stairs, Anna couldn't help but notice the broken wooden stair piece that left a gaping hole in the floor. It was as if the very fabric of the house was crumbling around them. As she reached for the railing, she felt a cold hand brush against her own, and she let out a startled cry gripping Ben's arm with all her might. Ben was quick to respond, gripping Anna's hand with a reassuring firmness and muttering soothing words in her ear. Don't be afraid, he whispered. I've been in places like this before. Nothing is going to happen to us. As they entered the main hall of the second story, Anna couldn't shake off the sinister feeling that was creeping up on her. The darkness was absolute, and she could hear the distant sounds of a man and a woman arguing, and the haunting strains of music. They followed the sounds to a room at the end of the hall, and as they approached, the voices grew louder, until they seemed to be right on top of them. Ben could feel heart pounding in his chest as they pushed open the door and stepped inside but what they found there was not what they were expecting. The room was empty, and the voices had gone silent. 
The only sound that remained was the mournful screeching of an old record player, the source of the music. Ben stepped forward, curiosity getting the better of him, and slowly lifted the needle from the spinning record. But as the music stopped, a sense of unease settled over them, as they were left wondering how the music could still be playing without electricity. Meanwhile, Craig and Daisy were busy exploring the downstairs. As they were in the lobby looking at a portrait of a young woman and man, probably husband and wife, Craig felt a sudden push from behind. He fell to the ground, his heart pounding as he realized that there was something, or someone, lurking around them. Come down, he shouted, his voice echoing through the house. Craig stood up, his heart pounding with fear, and shouted again, Hurry up, come down fast. Ben and Anna quickly rushed downstairs to join their friends. Craig told them about the incident, and they knew they had to communicate with the spirit. In that moment, they realized that there was a spirit looming around them. Ben grabbed a set of alphabet wooden boards with the letters carved into them and a large candle. They lit the candle and turned off their flashlights, sitting around the wooden boards and candle. Daisy took out a pen and notebook, ready to transcribe any messages that the spirit might have. All of them closed their eyes, Ben recited magic mantras, asking God to help them communicate with the spirit and keep them safe. As they sat in silence, the air grew thin and the atmosphere grew more horrifying. Everyone felt a foul taste in their mouths and their eyes became dry and irritated. They felt like the spirit was sitting among them, and suddenly, Ben's hands began moving on the board. Daisy wrote down each letter as Ben spelled out the message. The spirit asked why they had entered the house and the friends explained their fascination with haunted places. The spirit then asked them, Leave now and never return, but the friends were determined to communicate with the spirit and not leave until they had the answers they sought. The spirit began to intimidate the group in an attempt to make them leave. Lights flickered on and off, winds blew fiercely, and objects in the lobby shook violently. Windows and doors were violently slamming open and shut, sending shivers down the spine of those present. The deafening sound of ringing bells assaulted their ears, adding to the feeling of unease. Dark shadows of bats seemed to dance around the lobby, further intensifying the already palpable sense of dread. Anna was overwhelmed by the scene, her tears streaming down her face, as she gave in to the fear. Ben, however, managed to calm her down, reminding her that they were in safe hands, protected by the magic mantra. He urged her to be strong and not give in to the spirit's threats. Despite the ghost's insistence for them to leave and never come back, the group refused to go until they had a chance to communicate with the spirit. We will not leave until we've communicated with you. Ben shouted, his voice echoing through the room. No matter what dangers we face, you must understand that, he implored the spirit. The spirit granted them permission and ability to speak with it. Ben inquired, why had you occupied the house? The ghost identified itself as Miss Nancy, the former owner of the house who lived there 25 years ago. Nancy revealed that her marriage with Alex was filled with conflict and unhappiness. She shared that her husband was frequently drunk and would frequently argue with her over borrowing money. She also disclosed that she had discovered her husband's affair with a bartender girl, which further added to her dissatisfaction with the marriage. She stated that she had a feeling that her husband would soon take control of her property, as she often heard him speak recklessly when he was drunk. With the constant drama and disloyalty, 
she knew that she would soon seek a divorce. One night, after returning home from her clinic as a professional dermatologist, she had another argument with her husband. As she was changing, she noticed that a cabinet drawer was partially open and her keys were inside. She realized that her gold jewelry necklace, which she had purchased for $5,000 the previous Christmas, was missing. With a fierce shout, she called out for Alex and frantically searched the house for him. To her shock and horror, she discovered him in the drawing room with his girlfriend, Mia. As she engaged in a fierce argument with him, Mia viciously struck her on the back of the head with an iron rod, causing her to collapse unconscious. They cruelly dragged her into the main lobby, as she struggled to remain conscious and could hear them coldly discussing their nefarious plan. Her greedy husband, with the help of his love, Mia, had calculatedly plotted to murder her for the sole purpose of seizing control of her property. And then, with chilling precision, Alex brutally slaughtered her, like a lamb. Alex and Mia had buried her under the wooden floor where they were sitting right now. Afterwards, they had taken her property documents and sold the house to a new owner. Her spirit had been haunting the house ever since, not allowing any new occupants to live there. Nancy had made it clear that she would not find peace and leave the house until she received justice for the injustice that had been inflicted upon her. She demanded her murderers rotting the rest of their life behind the bar. The children had pledged to support Nancy in her quest for justice in the wake of the tragic event she had experienced. They had also offered their condolences and support to Nancy. The traumatic event had left everyone feeling emotionally exhausted. As they opened their eyes and looked at each other, it was evident that the gravity of the situation was weighing heavily on all of them, with sweat pouring down their faces. They found a picture album of Nancy and realized the portrait on the lobby's wall was of Nancy and her husband, Alex. The group decided to take the picture with them and headed to the National Library to search for newspaper articles from 25 years ago. They found a missing persons report filed by Nancy's aunt and decided to track down her aunt. Unfortunately, they soon learned that her aunt's phone number was no longer in service and she had died ten years ago. The group was disappointed but not discouraged, they would find another way to get Nancy's justice. Determined to help Miss Nancy find justice, the group of friends decided to seek help from the police. They rushed to the police station and told Sergeant David their entire story. He was skeptical and refused to believe such a tale, dismissing it as just a fanciful story and told them to go home and stay away from the haunted house. Feeling dejected and upset, the group decided to take matters into their own hands and came up with a plan. Craig suggested they visit the land registry office to find out who had purchased the property and how Nancy's husband had sold it. Upon reaching the land registry office, they paid a fee of $5 to obtain the property deeds records. They checked the property deeds chain and discovered that Nancy had inherited the property from her father, but Alex had manipulated the deed's documents and sold it to a businessman named Peter in 1960. They then contacted Mr. Peter who lived in the main boulevard, 27 lanes. He confirmed the sale of the property but said that he had encountered paranormal activities on his first night and abandoned the house in the very next day. The children were determined to see their mission through and they took Mr. Peter with them to the police station to speak with Sergeant David once more. This time, with Mr. Peter's confirmation and the evidence they had gathered, Sergeant David was convinced of their story. The newspaper missing report and manipulated deeds records solidified their case. With renewed determination, Sergeant David, the children group, 
Mr. Peter and his team visited the haunted house once again. They dug the lobby and finally recovered the remains of Miss Nancy, along with the murder weapon. They collected all the evidence and took it to the laboratory for forensic analysis. They found fingerprints on the knife, and a post-mortem examination revealed that it was indeed a murder. With this new evidence, the police were able to gather all the information about Alex and his girlfriend, and obtained arrest warrants for both of them. Sergeant David flew to New York to make the arrests. He apprehended Alex and his mistress, and their fingerprints matched the ones found on the murder weapon. A trial was held and Alex was sentenced to 14 years in jail while his mistress received seven years. The children and Sergeant David, with a sense of closure, buried Miss Nancy's remains in a graveyard. They reported her murder in the local newspaper that had taken place 25 years ago to the proper authorities, bringing the tragic story to a close and allowing Miss Nancy's spirit to finally rest in peace. With the revelation of the truth and the capture of her murderers, the haunted house was no longer a place of fear and unease. The courtyard, once overgrown and gloomy, came back to life with lush greenery, colorful flowers and a tree that had previously been dry and withered, now stood tall and green. Mr. Peter, who had always believed in the innocence of the house, was overjoyed that the truth was finally revealed and was able to move back in, now free of the dark cloud that had hung over the property. He thanked the children's group profusely for their efforts in helping him reclaim his home. To show his gratitude, he invited them to dinner and they enjoyed a meal together. As they were leaving Mr. Peter's house, they had one last encounter with Miss Nancy's spirit. They saw her standing in the courtyard, surrounded by the greenery, smiling and waving at them, as if to thank them for their help in bringing her justice. The group of children were overjoyed as they had finally found closure for Miss Nancy and helped her find peace. They knew it was her, as they had seen her picture many times and recognized her instantly. She looked happy and content, as if all her worries and grievances had been resolved. The spirit disappeared as quickly as she had appeared, but the children knew that she will always be there in the house, watching over them, forever in peace. The group of children felt proud of their accomplishment and knew that they had made a difference in the world.